Spontonians, me, Evan Schletter, Spontanean Nation, will be at the Now Hear This podcast festival in Anaheim, California this October, joined by dozens of your favorite public radio, comedy, and storytelling podcasts all in one place. Now Hear This is like Comic-Con for podcasts, a weekend jam-packed with live performances and special events for podcast fans, and tickets are on sale now. Mark Marin will be there for a conversation with his producer, Brendan McDonald, about their favorite moments and behind-the-scenes stories from WTF. Plus, you'll see live performances of some great podcasts, including Comedy Bang Bang, Lore, Super Ego, and How Did This Get Made? And Spontanea Nation is going to be there as well. Some of your favorite performers and special guests, of course. Register today at NowHearThisFest.com. NowHearThisFest.com. Early bird discount pricing is available now, but it ends July 22nd. Be sure to check out the VIP ticket options for access to things like reserve seating, VIP express lines, and special meet and greets with the hosts. And there are very few of those VIP tickets, so definitely check that out. October 28th through 30th at Anaheim, California. Go to NowHearThisFest.com for more info, and I'll see you there. But not if you see me first. Welcome! Welcome! There's the range. Welcome! Welcome! <laughs> Paul, why don't you do it in the middle? You can't do it. <laughs> Love the extremes. Welcome. Welcome. I just, man, here's how I do it. I'm either, I go for broke or I hedge my bets very seriously. What? what <laughs> Look, Yoda taught us do or do not. There is no try. What a rude puppet. <laughs> You don't get any, any credit for trying? <laughs> this is this is stuck in my craw from childhood. <laughs> I look, I am not a grudge holder. But there are certain things, certain injustices from when I was a kid that still haunt me to this day. I remember being so upset, and I think it's been discussed on this show before. There was a candy called Toffee Fay. Little discs of I don't know, caramel or something with a little chocolate button in the center. And the ad campaign was, Toffee Fay, it's too good for kids. <laughs> oh, and as a child, this enraged me. <laughs> but I would have my revenge because sometimes I would eat adult candy. There was a thing called f <laughs> figurines. Figurines was like a diet snack <laughs> for ladies. Do you remember these? Figurines was someone, and I don't think you'll be able to figure out who. Loyal listeners of the show will never guess the identity of this person, but someone remembers these. Figurines were like almost like Rice Krispie Treat type things, and they were for ladies. How do we know this? Because the commercial... Was a, the theme song in the commercial was a song parody of the classic Tangerine. And the, the person would sing, a lady would sing, Figurines does a lady proud. Something like that. Does a lady proud. I, I can't, don't hold me to that. But the idea was like, hey, hey, you fat woman. I know you're trying to diet, but you can't stop eating sweet things, you miserable fat crone. <laughs> Here, try this. It's vaguely sweet. Maybe you can trick your fat brain into thinking you ate a cake. <laughs> well, <coughs> my mother bought these at some point, and I think I ate a whole box of them. Then nobody was around. I also recall I ate an entire jar of Flintstones chewables. Maybe don't make your vitamins taste like candy. Maybe kids are not ready for the responsibility of vitamins. I know I wasn't. It would be many years before I could responsibly eat vitamins. <laughs> vitamins. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Will we never learn... Little pitchers have big ears. 
that's the lesson from TV commercials. <laughs> that's not, look, <laughs> guys, <laughs> I feel like we haven't done this in a really <laughs> long time, but that's not true. I was just in here last week. Welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. Ooh, someone just, were you sneezing or were you? Okay. All sorts of stuff happening here that you can't see, folks, but I can see it all because I am Uatu the Watcher. Forbidden to interfere. A reference I cannot seem to shake. <laughs> folks, this is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program, and we have a free form chat based on a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the program and using details. We improvise a narrative story that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. We improvise, we do some narrative improv based on a location from our guest and perhaps pulling details from our conversation. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends how we're feeling. And if you're feeling froggy, just jump and we'll get in a fight. I haven't threatened anyone in a long time and it felt pretty good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our guest this time out, you will no doubt recall from his role on Reno 911 and a bajillion other things, including bajillion dollar properties on CISO. <laughs> I have a vested interest in that program. Please nice. say, nice. <laughs> say hello to Cedric Yarbrough. Hey. Cedric, yeah. thank What's you for being Paul? here. What's happening, Paul? How are you? I'm feeling pretty good. How good, are you feeling? Good. Well, I feel threatened because you... I feel like the threat was froggy to me. I think I felt like you were like saying, if you feel froggy. You felt point. You felt it was I pointed. Felt it was at me. Yeah. Now I made a even though there are a lot of people in here, you were <laughs> And I wasn't looking at anyone. Right. And then like, what's going on, Paul? I understand. Yeah. Right? But now if we, if it came down to a fight, I yeah. think you would destroy me. Probably. You I've you are in a lot of fights. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in fights when you yeah, were a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I grew up in a very racist <laughs> <laughs> neighborhood. Let's start out. Wow. What, hey, what was that neighborhood? That's uh, that was in uh, uh, Prior Lake, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Minneapolis, and uh, uh, we moved to a suburb of Minneapolis to Prior Lake, where there weren't that many black folk there, and uh, they, you, you're different. Uh, All uh, right, let's tussle. And Here the, we go. Yeah. As an adult, have you been in many fights? Um, no, not many <laughs> as an adult. I'm trying to remember my, my last. I did get in a fight a couple months ago. A physical <laughs> fight? Yes. I take that back. Yeah, I got in a physical fight what a couple of months that? ago. A, a sometimes people um, want... <laughs> <laughs> To want you to know that they're there, their presence. Sure. And sometimes if you don't remember them, they get upset mm. when they're drinking alcohol. Sure. And uh, this this is what happened with this gentleman. He um, thought I was supposed to have known him. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a person and he and uh, apparently I hadn't remembered him from before, and he remembered that I did not remember him. Sure. So he came up and was like, "He's not going to remember you." And I said, "Well, I know this lady. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I, I know her. I'm talking to her. He's not going to remember your name." I'm like, "Wait, what? Are you doing a bit? Is this like I thought we were? Wait, I I couldn't believe that this was happening. Right? He's seriously like trying to ag me on." So I was like, okay, let, let me just walk away. I walked away because I thought it was a joke, but it was serious. So I walked away. 10, 15 minutes later, he comes back. I was like, oh, you know what? I fuck you. You're an asshole. I go, wait, what? Me? Yeah, you. I go, all right. Do you want to go outside? And he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> oh. I'm like, okay, it's happening. Here we go. Now, when Let's, you may I ask, mm -hmm. when you asked, do you want to go outside? Yeah. Do you want to step outside? How much did you want to step I outside? I don't want to go out at all. <laughs> I don't want to go out at all. But I you was thought, having a pretty good time. But and, did you think asking the question might end Yes. This? Right. Yeah. That's how it, it looks like in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. 
you want to step outside. It's like, okay, all right. No, I don't want to step outside. I just want to tell you you're an asshole. That's all I want. Right. That's what I thought was going to happen. Right. No, he wanted to step outside because I did not know who he was, and I was supposed to have known right. him. And then you gentlemen stepped outside. So we're about to step outside, <laughs> and this is when he takes a swing. Oh, yeah. that wasn't the agreement. And that was not what we we had talked about before. <laughs> He takes a swing, and I get back, and he hits my shoulder blade, and and now I'm here, and I'm like, hey, now you, now you can't leave, bah! and I just popped him a real a real solid one, right? Uh, right. Pulled it so I didn't knock his ass out, but enough for him to know, don't fuck with me. Just a solid line drive yeah, down him, the center, and uh, he fell into the bar, and uh, and then that that was it. Did any uh, bar authorities or barthorities yes. step in at that point? <laughs> barthorities, as they're known. Uh, they did after that. They they uh, grabbed him, took him out. And uh, months later, uh, yeah, this was, yeah, this was in November. Um, months later, he uh, apologized at a uh, karaoke bar. <laughs> 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 Karaoke bar is, of course, the seat of diplomacy. Yes. I don't recommend fighting, guys. I'm not a fight. Colleen. <laughs> you're, not lo- you're not looking for fights. No, I am not, not looking. looking I am not looking for fights, and I avoid them. Well, Cedric, but. that was all bonus because my question to you is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this, is, this is a bit of a cool down question. Great. This is a bit Great. of a cool down question. Right. Data or data, how do you pronounce it and why? Uh, I want to say that I pronounce it data, Mm -hmm. but I think I pronounce it data. Really? Yeah. That sounds so lame. Oh, (laughs) man. I want to be able to say I pronounce it data, but I don't think I do. I, I, I think I pronounce it data. I think, though, data is considered a little bit fancier. Than oh, data. is it? Yeah, I think oh, I so. I thought data was more fancy. I think data is considered, especially the person who asked this question, oh. considered data to be the more pedestrian pronunciation. Oh, okay. I myself say data. You do? Yeah, I oh. do. I do. Oh, I, it's well, just uh, that's how I knew that I feel word. Feel better about myself because I was totally uh, the opposite. I thought I mean, data sounded a little bit more. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like I'm coming in, and uh, professor, I have the data here for you. you know, that, I just I don't know if it, for some reason that sounded a little bit more professional. I think that data is is um, anytime I hear that uh, the short a, I think that people are are saying like. Actually, yeah. Uh, if we were to go back to the to the Latin roots, <laughs> um, you would be saying data. Yeah. Um, I okay. grew up saying data. I I had a thing recently where I, someone I think on Facebook or something like this had said, "How do you pronounce this word?" S Y R U P. And then I realized I don't know how I pronounce that word. Oh. And I think I pronounce it maybe differently. Each time, but I, if I if I am recalling correctly, mm-hmm. I believe I grew up saying syrup, syrup, and that that was yeah. that is with my Philadelphia uh, uh, accent intact. Syrup. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm the same. I don't think I said syrup. I don't think that's me. Syrup, syrup. sounds nice though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It sounds better. Syrup. It sounds more appetizing. Yeah, appetizing. <laughs> Apper- <laughs> Bartholities. <laughs> Syrup, syrup. Are there? Do you have words that uh, what we call the in what we call the the passive vocabulary, which is a word that you have, you know what it is, you've seen it in print many times, but you've never said it out loud, and that you were astonished at the pronunciation when you heard it out loud. Um, I think audience would really? be one of those because my mother, oh, she's the worst. Her <laughs> pronunciations on everything are just she. She uh, she's one of those people that loves loves words and loves um, you know it, it loves to make fun of people who don't pronounce things right. <laughs> and <laughs> here's another thing. Okay, in the African American community, we pronounce things wrong sometimes. So <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, so she's very strict about Cedric. You gotta pronounce things right, but. She's bad at it herself. She says, "Oidience, oid, yeah, oidience, oidience." oidience. I have uh, yeah. never heard that before. Yeah. Oidience. I think it's because 
A U. I don't know. I, I don't know why that is weird for her. So I grew up. Wow. I grew up saying audience, and then <laughs> noticing no, not everyone is saying it that way. Not only not everyone, but no one. But no my one mother. is, but my mom. You know? Yeah. Audience. So, audience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I've had to retool and rework audience. <laughs> How do you still think it sometimes? Yeah. Like when you see them print, do you think audience? The audience. Oh. Yeah. I think it all the time. <laughs> what were some other ones? Um, uh, T H E R E. She she says thar, mm-hmm. not there. Where's she from? Mm-hmm. Mini, uh, Mississippi. Sorry, Mississippi. Okay. she's from Jackson, Mississippi. So that could very well be a regional. It could be. Yeah. But we have. Oh man, my, my fa- <laughs> that that family is. Oh, <laughs> the Mississippi aunt side. Aunt Squeaky. Yeah, I have an aunt Squeaky. Well, sure. Of course, yes. On Squeaky, we have a piece of paper uh, in the family. Yeah, that they they grew up and uh, you know they were they were born. I'm sorry. And they, Everyone they, had a physical yeah. reaction. You have a relative who is called piece of paper. Piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, because he was born and he was none but you know the size of a piece of paper. So <laughs> piece of papers. Not piece of, just piece of. Right, piece right. of paper. But this is not Aunt the person's Squeaky, no, legal name. No, no, it's Larry. <laughs> and Aunt, yeah. what is Aunt Squeaky's real name? Uh, Yvonne. Aunt Yvonne. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Yes, uh, but she, you know, when she laughs, she, you know, so she's Squeaky. Aunt Squeaky. Did you have any nicknames when you were a kid that stuck? Like family nicknames that you just could not shake? Because those <sighs> things will stick Man, forever. I don't want to let everyone know that. Under- understood. But I will. <laughs> Uh, N- Nui is, uh, my mother calls me Nui all the mm. time. Huey, I loved Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Who didn't? Yeah. And she, I guess she wanted me a part of that duck brother family. And <laughs> Nui was, right, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Nui. That's you. <laughs> so. Are you an only child? No. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> I'm the oldest of three. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But. Um, Do the others have nicknames? Yeah. Everyone, yeah, everyone's got, but no one's got like piece of paper or anything like that's, that. Yeah. That's special. That's just a whole That is sen- special. Yeah, that's just a whole <laughs> sentence. It's not a nickname. It's a <laughs> piece of paper. Piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you, do you have nickname? Do you, did you grow up with a? We did not grow up with nicknames. No. I think, well, there were, there were like and little. you're from Philly? There were little, yeah. There okay. were little pet names that my mom would call us occasionally, but it was not the default. The closest we had was. We had one of those things where my oldest sister could not say uh, Aunt Ro, my mother's sister, Rosalie. Uh-huh. And so we she we just grew up calling her Rero, and we uh, always Rero. called her Rero. Yeah. And it was the kind of thing where you you would realize it when you were talking to someone else outside of the family and you were telling a story that involved these people. And we wouldn't say my Rero. We would, we would just Rero. <laughs> Rero. And, and a lot of times people would say, would stop me and say, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> and I would have to explain the whole boring story. Yeah. But, but that was it. Rero used to, she was a bit of an artist and she taught art at my elementary school. Uh-huh. And she made these, um, they were like, uh, she did all kinds of like, stained glass and stitching and stuff like that. She would just create things. And she made a series of plates um, that uh, this, I I think that was, I don't, I guess people still do this, but I remember when that was a new thing, like at school, you would make a plate for your, for your parents or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I depicted my, I remember I made a plate depicting my father coming home from work and tending to the tomato plants in our backyard. Um, But Rero made a series of plates for various relatives which were ju- the template was a clown, like a happy sort of childlike clown. Oh, um, uh, and and somewhere in the plate would be a thing uh, denoting uh, that person, like a, a signature thing. Uh-huh. And I think for my mother, it's like she liked Hershey bars, and so oh. there would she was like holding a Hershey bar, and there were some Hershey wrappers. Oh, God. <laughs> a clown with. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, that's how you know it's you. Is because oh, that's you. Of this. Yeah. They all looked identical. Maybe they were different colors. Yeah. But the, there would be one uh, distinguishing characteristic. Did you have one with just you eating figurines? Yeah. 
gloves. I, it might as well have been eating like buttons that look like candy. I think that was that was how far my sweet tooth ran. Like anything sweet, anything I'll, I'll put it in my mouth. Pop it in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Were you? Did you have anything like that when you were a kid? Like where you did a thing that you were not supposed to do? Well, oh. I mean that's that's a very broad question, yeah. but but along the lines of like you ate a thing or. Well, the, what comes to mind is, okay, so my brother and I, three years apart, mm -hmm. and uh, th that was another nickname. My brother gave me the name Seaguck. He couldn't say Cedric. Right. A lot of people can't. Sure. Anyway, yeah, I'm still being called Cedric all the time. That's mm -hmm. another, oh, that's a whole other thing. This but is the lady anyway, who said so, audience. Oh, who audience, yes, Cedric. yes, yes. She's the one who <laughs> named me Cedric. <laughs> Damn it, Mom. Uh, so my brother and I, we were just, just dirty children. <laughs> Let's just preface it that way. And we did not want to take a bath. Sure. And what could be worse? Oh, we're outside <laughs> playing in dirt, That's man. Right. You're interrupting the fun. All right, get in. You're taking a bath. Okay. So we go upstairs and uh, we took baths, you know, together. And so we were um, faking taking a bath. We ran the water and <laughs> splash around. <laughs> uh, you know, making noise. And yeah, mom won't know. Uh, we see her peek around the corner to see that we're just outside of the bathtub. <laughs> we're like, oh, shit, it's going down. <laughs> so let's hurry up and take off our clothes and get in the bath. She came back with the belt, and it was one of the worst spankings I've ever. Water, wow. and naked, and fun. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. You ever been spanked? Not like wet? that. Not <laughs> no, no, I have it's not. No, not I have not. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Now I the, you got crazy the, that night. When boy. we got hit, <laughs> <laughs> she spanked the dirt right off. You. Yes, she did. <laughs> and then you still had to get in the back. Yeah, and then we still had to. Yeah, man, it was double. <laughs> yeah. When's when is the last time your mother hit you? How old were you? Oh, man. She must have stopped around 12, 13. She, after, after the, the belt, she went on to a wood stick. Sure. Which was, you know, a stirring stick, you know, for our Like a wooden spoon? Yeah, a wooden yeah. spoon. But she called it the wood stick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, a wood yeah, she's stick. She's a curious woman. Yes, yes. Because she graduated from... Going outside and getting trees, right? To you know, like uh, you literally had to go out and pick a switch. Yes, yeah, go right. pick a switch. Wow. My brother one time just brought in a log, and she <laughs> just laughed. It was just so damn funny. She's like, "Okay, y'all are just too fucking funny for me." Uh, now we're just gonna have a the wood stick now, because I'll just pick it out. Now I have it. Okay. So you thank so you for pointing out a flaw in my yeah. plan. Okay. That, you, all right. <laughs> Y'all funny motherfuckers. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. That's hilarious. Now now this is this is what you're gonna get. <laughs> oh so God. the last time I was spanked, she hit me with it and it broke off and it's like, okay, well, you're just too old. <laughs> that's that, the proof. And that, and I was that, waiting for this day. Yeah, and that's funny too. So <laughs> you're a Hulk boy. <laughs> I can't hit you. Okay, and so that was that. Well, I, I wanted us to end on a happy note. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cedric, child abuse. Thank you, exactly. Yeah, I hope but, so. but that eventually ended, at least for one child in the household. <laughs> Cedric, we are releasing this episode in, let me tell you, I think we're getting on to the end of... Uh, uh, July. Yes, yeah, July 18th. Mm. This episode comes out. Is there anything that you would like to promote that you have any idea what your life will be at that time? And July 18th. Uh, yes, um, we will be in the uh, second season of Ballers uh, for oh, HBO. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson mm. there. Very nice gentleman. Very and nice gentleman. I play Clyde the Glide Jackson, <laughs> ex football player. Extraordinaire. <laughs> it's just very, you know, he's very Clyde the Glide. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you know how Clyde is. <laughs> hey, it's Clyde, right? <laughs> Come on. I, what? I fucked your wife? I didn't mean to. <laughs> Come on. It's Clyde, right? This is classic C the G. Yes, this classic Clyde. And of course, the black version monthly at Largo. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, that's such a fun show to do. Absolutely. Um, we've been able to do that for um, a couple of months now at Largo, and uh, we've been 
able to actually do it at uh, the um, the Sketch uh, Festival mm-hmm. in San Francisco, and we have such a great time there. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Folks, I urge you to, uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area, uh, to get tickets for the black version after you get tickets to Spontaneous Nation Live in Largo, of course. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and, and, Cedric, where can people find you should they wish to find you online? Oh, um... I'm at Cedric Yarbrough on Twitter and at Cedric Yarbrough on Instagram. Guys, he's made it so simple for you. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take a break. When we return, you will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation returns. Spontanea Nation with Paul F. Tompkins is brought to you once more by our old pals, Lisa, the mattress company. Lisa has done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience that we have all suffered through by creating a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and shipped for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Who could forget those stirring words by John F. Kennedy, the president? Oh, when he gave that speech about mattresses ahead of his time, do you think that's why they killed him? The 10-inch mattress, Lisa, we're back back on track with Lisa. The 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam layers, including two inches of memory foam, two inches of a really cool latex-like foam called a V-Nup that is perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. And everyone applauds for a long time. The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA. Big applause. And ships for free to anywhere in the USA and Canada. Because he was from Boston. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. Now, that's great. That's to, to remove risk from your life. Like, you know, riding in a convertible on a Dallas Plaza. That risk, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Because <laughs> of, of this mattress. No, you still have to worry about that risk. Where The risk is confined to the mattress. Confined to the mattress. You have 100 nights to try the mattress risk-free. And for every 10 they sell, Lisa donates a mattress to a shelter. How awesome is that? Okay, so go to leesa.com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout to get $75 off. Tell him, Mr. President... I say to you, L-E-E-S-A dot com slash P-F-T, promo code P-F-T at checkout, you will receive $75 off. And that is why he is on the cover of the 50 cent piece. Hey, it's me, Paul. Are you in some kind of relationship, like a nice committed relationship or like a, 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 a relationship that's headed that way? Like... You know, it's going pretty good, and you're probably sure this person is the one. Well, let me ask you something. Do they like flowers? A lot of people do. Why don't you send this person some flowers? Flowers can say all sorts of things. They can say, I like you. They can say, I love you. They can say, I'm sorry that I uh, called you an ectomorph. (laughs) It happens. These are the fights people have. Send flowers as a token of esteem, appreciation, apology, or condolence. Those are the, those are the flower occasions. And if you're going to send flowers, send them from thebooks.com. Books, short for bouquets. B-O-Q-U-S. It's fun. Everyone likes nice flowers if they're honest Books flowers are grown at eco-friendly farms on the side of a volcano. I'm going to repeat that. The side of a volcano. That means that the blooms are larger and the colors are more vibrant. Now, if they could get flowers from inside the volcano, I mean, those flowers would be obviously the best ever, but it's too dangerous. Don't try it, guys. I don't need you going off half-cocked. You follow the rule book. Here's the thing about volcano flowers. It's better soil. There's more sun because it's 10,000 feet up in the air. Flowers, closer to the sun. It just makes their job easier. They're well-rested. They're happier. They look better. It's, it's a lesson for us all. 
Gorgeous flowers come from thebooks.com and they are hand delivered to your person of interest. Let's say you're a detective and you're hunting down a suspect, send them flowers and see if that causes them to confess. Thebooks.com have great prices. They started a mere $40, no upcharges, no extra fees. Even delivery is absolutely free when you register with the books. And listeners of Spontaneous Nation save 20% off the bouquet of that listener's choice. Just go to books.com, enter promo code PFT. That is B-O-U-Q-S dot com, promo code PFT. Books.com, promo code PFT. One more time, books.com, promo code PFT. What? We're back already? Welcome back, people who didn't go anywhere. We didn't go anywhere either. So we're even. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the land of make pretends. <laughs> Sitting right across from me. I think you were just on not too long ago. In real life or in the time of this? I In the time of this. No, I haven't done it in a while. Unless the live show airs before this one. It will. Then I will have, I will have just been there recently. Yeah, just so the audience knows, because I've, this comes up sometimes. It hasn't come up in a while, though. The episodes are released in the order in which they are recorded. So you can always track the question from uh, last episode's guest. It will always be, literally, the last episode's guest. So if you're wondering who asked Cedric, the question, it was the person who was on the show last week. And that will always, always be the case. Always. <laughs> Colleen Smith! Yay! Colleen! <laughs> welcome back to the show. Thank you. We always have fun, right? Yeah. I don't I can't remember a bad time. <laughs> hey, how about your you had that weird thing in your side? Did that go away? It did. It healed. What? It healed itself. And I said it, I tweeted something about it after that episode aired where I was like, it healed itself. But I actually was good this morning. I got up and like went to exercise in the small gym that's in my apartment building. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I was doing like a rowing kind of weightlifting thing. And I'm Uh like, you might anger that part of your body again. Don't go crazy. Just to refresh the listener's memory, what was the issue? I went to sleep and I woke up and it felt like one side of my back was just like splitting off mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the bone. Oh. Yeah. And it just it hurt real bad for like a week and then it, it went it went away. Anyway, I think it's because I tried to do too many like deadlifts with like no weight. <laughs> like don't be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> just a pole. Three pound like lady weights in each hand. <laughs> the kind you're supposed to power a <laughs> <laughs> but you think you think you probably pushed it with these? Yeah, and you, <laughs> I had and bad four tore a hole in your back. Yeah, yeah. I'm tall. I have a long back. You know, <laughs> things <laughs> happen. Cedric uh, knows things. Ha- this is a very tall show. We have yeah. a lot of tall people on this show. Yeah, I and then say, there's me. I want to say, by the way, uh, I didn't want to speak because I didn't exist yet in this world. <laughs> um, I can attest that Cedric is not a nonviolent, lovely person. I have never been punched by him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you just go by? Has Cedric ever hit me? No, he must be nonviolent. But he said in the middle of his thing, and I was like, yeah. I nodded, but no one could you know, right. hear nodding. It's true. Except Daredevil, the man without fear. Yes, who has weird powers that went away in the second season. I, that season made me so angry. Anyway. Oh, wait, in the second season, he didn't have... They just, like, forget that in the first season they set up that basically he can see. Right. And then I, I was paying attention, like, there's a lot of time where he doesn't have to use his stick because no one's watching him, and he's still right. walking around like a blind guy with a stick. And I'm like, didn't we just find out that he basically has, like, predator vision? So, when, like, he's using the stick even when there's no, like, in his apartment or something? Yeah, for, like, no show. He oh, would be really? Doing it, he would be doing it when it, like, he, he didn't need to do it. Yeah, you'll notice it in the second season. I like that. He has uh, a four-day growth of beard <laughs> just all the time. Yeah. And it's like, he's still a lawyer. He's got to show up for court. You would think some judge would say, Mr. Murdoch, next time you appear before my bench, you will be properly shaven. Maybe they feel bad for him because he's blind. I, I wish he wouldn't play that card. <laughs> <laughs> he always does. Colleen, you, like Daredevil, have red hair. I do. So do you feel like you relate to the character on that level? No. 
Uh, but I did, <laughs> I did get to see one of my redheaded heroes last weekend. Who was your redheaded hero? Axel Friggin Rose. Oh. I guess I never thought of him as a redhead, yeah. but I suppose he's a strawberry blonde, really. He's a full on redhead, <laughs> and I was in love with him as, at an inappropriate age. I was like eight when. Really? Well, when did Appetite come out? Like eighty-seven. Uh, for the listeners, Appetite for Destruction. Yeah. Something like, sorry, the lingo is too... <laughs> too inside. Too if it, inside. If it came out like 87, 88, I would have been like eight or nine. Right. In lust with the snake god with red hair. Do you have like, you felt like you full on had romantic feelings yes, for him? Yes, I, I wanted to marry him. I wanted to meet him and marry him. And Did like, you want to snuggle with him? No, I think I, I was a little bit of a, like a filthy little kid. I can see that. Like I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> sex... Was not something that I was up for. Right. But I really wanted to, like, make out and do some stuff. But did you know, even know what sex was at that point? Yeah, I would stay up late when my parents wouldn't let me, and I'd watch L.A. Law. L.A. <laughs> 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 Law. And remember, like, USA used to have Up All Night with Rhonda and with... Uh, Rhonda Shear, sure. Yeah. And they would play all those, like, horrible sex college comedies mm-hmm. that, like, I just watched one recently... With Phoebe Cates and Matthew Modine, I think are the leads. Mm. But it's like so rapey and terrifying, and there's so much nudity and like just sexual hijinks, and it's all about like getting this girl to sleep with them. And I watched those young. And that was probably like a PG rated movie. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think you grew up okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to meet Axel Rose? No. I mean, he, he came into a restaurant I worked at when I first <laughs> lived in LA, and I was so nervous. That I didn't, I didn't say anything to him. The bartender knew him and was like, "Yeah, he comes in all the time." And I was like, oh, "Okay." And I heard, <laughs> "I have to quit this job." Yeah, I heard him like say something to the bartender. I so I heard his voice, but I wouldn't look at him because I was too. <laughs> 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 so there's still a goal left for you in this world. Yeah. All right, Colleen, keep your feet on the ground and keep, keep reaching for the stars. Enough. I'm looking next to Colleen right now at this gentleman. Again, feels like. Forever ago, mm-hmm. but you were just uh, listeners <laughs> will remember him from a recent episode, uh, Houston's restaurant in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Jorgens, please welcome back to the show, Mark McConville. Hello, everyone. Mark, hello. How are your Jorgens, Paul? My Jorgens feel pretty good. <laughs> you don't have any Jorgen problems? No Jorgen problems. I've not been lifting lady weights. <laughs> you were on that episode too, Colleen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's, that's right. what you're. Yeah, but that was a that in time will be like months ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Were we ever so young? Mark. Yes, Paul. How have you been? Real good. Real good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you are for you, you're a little Matt Murdocky right now. Here's what happens been days to since me. Shaved. Please. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm Please a head shaver. I'm a head shaver from way back when. That's right. <laughs> Probably like 25. Watching on. heads get shaved. But occasionally you'll cut your head. Shaven. One will. A person. Yes. And there's no, you can't shave around it. I'd have this patch, <laughs> but I have like this little cut on my head. So I got to just let it heal. So now. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, like a werewolf man for me <laughs> right now. <laughs> when you shave yeah. your head, mm-hmm. do you employ a mirror at some point? Do you employ two mirrors at some point? No, I do it in the dark. You do it in the goddamn dark. No, I use a mirror. <laughs> use a one mirror, sh- mirror. Right. That's all I need. And you use you use a blade razor because you just can't get it close enough with an electrical? Yeah, that's right. But you've I've tried. tried all kinds of different things. I've tried. <laughs> I did try a lady razor at one point because I oh. thought, oh, maybe it'll be better. It's not. Because <laughs> I thought, like, my head is like a kneecap. Right? Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's different yeah. than a face. I feel like your head is like a kneecap too. Everyone's is. <laughs> <laughs> what if you had head-like hair on your kneecaps? I don't have any hair on my kneecaps. Well, I don't either, Mark. I don't think anyone Does really anyone? has much hair on their kneecaps. I don't know. But if you had just a full head of kneecap <laughs> hair <laughs> on my head or on my knee, on your knee, I had just a full head. <laughs> I'd be fine with it. I wear pants. I don't think anybody would ever know. Would you ever wear shorts if you had <laughs> just like a real, like a yeah, like a luscious head of hair on your knee? Like I had Zach Galifianakis growing off my knee. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd probably wear shorts. Show it off. If it was only you, yeah. If I was the only one, wow. Don't you think you'd be anointed as somebody special? 
No, I don't think so. You'd, oh, you'd be a pariah. I think people would think it was gross. You're probably right. <laughs> In my career, oh, I, yes. I, yeah, hi, it's Cedric Carver. <laughs> hanging out, watching, and listening to this. In my career, I, I think I'm going to be a black judge at some point. Sure. And Have you played a judge yet? No, no, never. No, no oh, man, I'm still, you still too young, still such a baby here. <laughs> and I, uh, I just, I just think, Mark, if you ever come to my court. You better shave that knee. Yeah. <laughs> this, it's the only courtroom where shorts are allowed, but yes. you better have but nicely you, trimmed better kneecaps. Be, that better be shaved. That's right. <laughs> Cedric, I'm going to bounce off of you sure. and then look over here. Do it. Now, you, this one, oh. I feel like I literally have not seen you in quite some time. I know. When is the last time we saw each other? The cruise? Okay, so that was February. Yeah. And then not since then. I don't think so. Good God. Somebody's getting an urgent <laughs> vibrato. <laughs> Little Janet Varney. Yay! Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. It feels so great to be back. Does it feel like a really long time? Yes. Yeah, remember I texted you and I was like, I'm so unhappy that we're taking all this time off because you are so ahead of the game. And then you had to remind me that I got to do two shows that other people didn't get to do because they were live, basically shutting me down immediately. Like, That's And also you've done them since and most people haven't. So why don't you shut the fuck up? You, I wonder if you've done more episodes than anybody. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna have to look it up and see. Or In our Wikipedia? In our Spontopedia? Can I tell you something? Do we? There is a spot wiki that someone is maintaining. Yeah. A person whose screen name is Marius Perkins, and for all I know, could be their actual name as well. Yeah. But this person is cataloging all the information from every episode, oh my but gosh. also cataloging the uh, advertisement characters wow. from the ads. Wow. And that is actually Marius that is a Perkins. fun thing to read. No kidding. <laughs> because it's, I forgot all that stuff. You worked so hard on those ads. I know that sounds condescending, <laughs> and it, it is a little. No, it's not. No, I just Thank you that's just very sweet of you. But to like say. you know, I don't uh, people. It, I think it's effective. I want to hear what you're going to do next. Thank you. And I'm just telling the advertisers out there. I hope you appreciate that. But I also don't want to alienate you. So please continue to support the show. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Something that made me mad a while ago, as the listeners hearing this, this happened a while ago. I heard on Comedy Bang Bang uh, a commercial for. Tuxedo rentals? Hmm. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me hmm. that this tuxedo company went to someone else before yeah, me? Yeah, that's really surprising. The very idea. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. <laughs> and then people were saying, well, you probably already you you probably already have a lot of fancy clothes, so what do you need them to... The advertising isn't... You don't read ads to yourself. <laughs> The idea is I'm a person, uh, you can trust me if I'm telling yeah. you to go to a tuxedo company. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the guy you want telling people to go to a tuxedo company. That's, I'm uncomfortable with this information. Now you, on your podcast, The JV Club, mm. which is a beloved podcast of mine, <laughs> uh, you, when you started doing ads... You were so... <laughs> Which, by the way, it's not a start. It, like, finished. It was like, Are she said there again? were only going to be two. Oh, there were only two. I said, I'll, I'll only do it if there's, like, a limited amount. She's like, oh, no, I think it's only going to be two. And I was like, well, okay, I'll do two. Like, I'll let it go for two. You were so... There was, like, such a, so much guilt a tone it. of apology I to know. the audience. Like, I'm sorry, this it's is happening. It's been too... I've gone too long. You know what I mean? If I had started out with that. Right, 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 right. But now it's been so many years. It's almost yeah. 200 episodes. It feels patently weird to be like, I'm jumping on the man and everybody now I'm actually going to get paid a cent to do this instead of nothing um, so I just haven't been able to make peace with it although I do feel like if something really felt like a fit I could but I would want to kind of do a little bit more what Jimmy Pardo does which is like he actually wants to talk about a thing he thinks is great and then right. he sort of it's it becomes more in integrated it, but also he's very clear about what it is and that feels like old timey radio kind of in a weird way there we go like yeah and Annie wouldn't have been rescued without Ovaltine <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had Ovaltine? No, I imagine that it's like carnation malted milk powder that I've only oh, had from when another, I was a kid. Yeah, another thing. 
I would see ads yeah. for that Carnation Instant Breakfast. Yeah. And I would look oh, at the I'll TV. Just I want those, that. I would tear open those packets and dip, lick my finger and dip it in. Like lick sticks. It, like lick em sticks. <laughs> Same with pudding, like chocolate pudding. If I was home from school, quote unquote sick, uh, after I had gone through all the cereal, I would turn my attention to something that I was too young to know how to make. So I would just take the powder form. It and never occurred to me to do eat that. It. Oh, God. So mad. If you had a time machine. I would just look at that box saying, I wish my mom would make this pudding. Yeah. No, got to cut to the source. <laughs> <You're> real, <laughs> fuck these figurines. <laughs> Let's get into this pudding. Yeah. I could have been mainlining oh, chocolate God. powder. Oh, the sweet and salty delight. <laughs> Very dry. Very dry. Guys, what would you, Mark, Colleen, what would you eat like that when you were a kid that you weren't supposed to eat? Um, oh, I know that you two, I know you two have something. <laughs> oh, well, we. I don't think it was off limits, but sometimes we were too lazy to make the ramen. So you would, or you didn't pack lunch for school, so you'd have a paper bag and you would dump the ramen in the paper bag and you'd cr- crush it up so that it was in small bites and then you would pour the ramen powder over it and then you would eat dry ramen w- coated in ramen powder for lunch oh. or for a snack. What? Interesting. It's very common in Hawaii. That happens a Oh, I, you might as well shake a tree for a coconut. <laughs> We had a it's t- demented to me. <laughs> you guys are eating powder. But I feel like this would milk. I feel like this would tear up the inside of your mouth. It's so brittle. It was delicious. <laughs> Could you would you suck on a morsel till it softened enough so that you wouldn't get cut? <laughs> no, you just crunch it. It's you like got strong teeth. It's like chips. Oh. If only your it's teeth like were. Chips. Wait, if only your back was as strong as your teeth. Mark, how about you? <laughs> I'm, I'm the oldest of three, and I would watch my two younger brothers, and we would make. We had a toaster oven. We would make toasted sandwiches open face oh, in the absolutely. toaster oven, right? And yes. then you close them. And I would, that, I was sort of yeah. the chef all summer long, <laughs> making chef. frozen pizzas and sandwiches. Yeah. And one time I came home from something, and my brother had tried to make a sandwich, but he had put. Two pieces of bread with cheese on them on a plastic plate oh and dear. put that oh in the. Oh dear. No. Yeah, that was our big disaster. Did the plastic get on the heating element? Oh, it sure did. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled terrible. <laughs> did you guys get in trouble? I remember being like, Mom and Dad are going to kill you. The, you ruined the yeah. toaster oven and this, and they were so not mad. They were like, Oh, you didn't start a fire? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Did they themselves use the toaster oven? My parents? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Why All right. I, st- I, I miss a toaster oven. Now that you're saying this and made me want some toaster I oven. I never had a toaster. Sandwiches. We only had a toaster oven. Toaster oven reminds me of dim times in my life. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> some bachelor times when Paul was just getting out of his own in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we're going to change gears, have fun with some more ads. When we return, we will have procured our location from uh, Cedric Yarbrough, and we will do our improv. So get yourself right with God. (laughs) See you on the flip-flop. Today's Spontaneous Nation is sponsored by CISOP, the all-comedy ad-free streaming TV service made for the serious comedy nerd. If you love community and or Rick and Morty, so you could you might like community, might not like Rick and Morty. You might like Rick and Morty, don't like community. Maybe you like them both. If if you fall into any of those categories, you have to watch CISO's new original series, Harmon Quest. Harmon Quest is a comedic improv animated live action journey into the hilarious world of fantasy role playing with Dan Harmon and his comedy companions, starring the aforementioned Dan Harmon, Spencer Crittenden. Aaron McGathy and Jeff B. Davis, Dan Harmon, creator of Community, Rick and Morty, and Harmontown, brings you Harmon Quest. It's like nothing else you will see on TV, streaming, or anywhere else. Yeah, so we have TV, we have streaming, and then I, I, some gotcha platform, Mobisodes or whatever. Dan Harmon and team embark on an epic adventure of dragon slaying and chivalry as they attempt to save the world from evils and other such things. Fondue Zoobag, played by Dan Harmon, Bone Weevil, played by Jeff Davis, and Bluer, Boer O'Shift, played by Aaron McGathy, find themselves stumbling through mystical lands and treacherous monster-filled caves in their quest to defeat the evil heralds of the Manticore. 
Each episode features a new celebrity comedian who joins their heroic quest, like the 18-year-old monk Deepak Chopra, played by Chelsea Peretti, who kind of seeks vengeance because her village was destroyed, or Dildo Bob Pelt, veteran role player Thomas Middleditch, who is after, who's also after the heralds of the manticore and blows smoke from his magical pipe in very interesting shapes. Oh, I also did the very first episode, but I guess I'm not that special. You can watch every episode of Harmon Quest on CISO now. Go to CISO.com and use promo code HARMONQUEST to get two months free. Yeah, you heard me. That's an extra month on top of the already free trial. We're giving it away. Not, I have nothing to do with it, except for being that first episode. CISO is stacked with new original comedies, classic series, and loads of stand-up specials. They have every episode of SNL, the entire Monty Python catalog, and so much more. Start your free trial today, won't you? I don't know what, what was, <laughs> what's that i don't know what's going on over there piano wise ladies and gentlemen welcome back to spontaneous nation it is time to reveal our location provided to us by mr cedric yarbrough but first just so as you know in order to aid us in our storytelling we use sound effects just three sound effects to move us about in time let's say we're in a scene and we want to find out what's happening somewhere else at the exact same time. A meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there now. Same time. Let's say someone is having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. We want to travel backwards in time. You will hear this flash back sound effect. See how like, it's like the harp is going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say we want to return from the flashback to the present day or travel into the mysterious future. You will hear this flash forward sound effect. See, it's getting higher as it goes up, just like the future does. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now let us reveal our location. And that location is... <laughs> that location is... The Minnesota State Fair. The Minnesota State Fair. We take you now to the Minnesota State Fair. Wow, look at this. So much to see. What do you think? I mean, it's uh, it's wonderful. It's um, a little intimidating, to be honest it with is, you. There's I'm a intimidated. lot to take in. There's a, it feels like there's too much to do for the time we have. I'm very intimidated by this. Uh, do you have the map or the guide? What I was that the, thing they me, handed me, to us when we came here's in? Here's this thing. It's like uh, a sort fair of... fair is a veritable smorgasbord. Look at that rat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I, uh, I, well, I didn't. I was, uh, I was looking at the, uh, the pig contest. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, hello. Hey, did you, did, did you see rat go by a singing rat? Yes, yes. Uh, who who are you? Oh, uh, 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 my name is uh, uh, Toaster Strudel. You make me I'm in sorry. a toaster oven. Your yep. name is Toaster Strudel? Yep. That, they named the Strudels after me. <laughs> they, oh, so wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry. yeah, no, I no, do want is, to clarify this. This is very exciting, but yes. I do want to make sure yeah. I understand correctly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> they call you to Toaster Strudel. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the toaster strudels, the food that we know, they're named after you. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, from the majestic strudel family where the original strudel was named, the man who invented strudel, Hein von Strudel. And then, uh, you know, we descended, we immigrated to the United States of America. You know, multiple things happened. But uh, eventually my name was Toaster. So what happened when you guys were at Ellis Island? Next. I think it's Straudel, Jerry. So it looks like Stro Is it Str Stradel? Stradel? We are from Germany. We are a majestic family of Strudel makers. St Say as, it. as the black judge, <laughs> I decree it is Strudel. Oh, there we go. It saves a lot of time once we got that judge in here. Sign the papers, Jerry. <laughs> there we go. Here's a big, ugly stamp. Yep, that's, that's pretty much the story. So when, so when, I mean, I'm just guessing here, but when strudel became popular enough that they made toaster strudel, yeah, it followed that since you are already named toaster, they'd call it toaster strudel. I guess it's a good thing your name wasn't refrigerator. <laughs> I don't understand what's funny about that. Well, because you'd be yeah, toasting. You'd be 
strudel that would be called refrigerator strudel and people wouldn't you can't make strudel in a refrigerator you know or maybe what? you can i don't I know i don't think women should make jokes <laughs> now hmm i had a singing rap Interesting stance. that I was looking for, and you have distracted me too long with my life story. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry we showed an interest in you. Well, well honey, I'm sorry, honey. too. Goodbye. You, you've made my wife cry. Judith, please, don't cry. Don't cry, Judith. It's our honeymoon. <laughs> And we're here at the Minnesota State Fair. I'm sorry, Coffee. I don't know why I got so emotional about a perfect stranger. Hold up, hold up. Hold yeah, up. Yes? Do you say your name's Coffee? Oh, look who's back and interested now. Oh, I never really went away. I just kind of hid behind that bush. <laughs> what? I like to hear the follow-up after conversations, what people might say about me when I'm You, about- You were like an unseen... Oh, I can't say it. Oh, oh. Audience? Yeah, Audience. Audience? Audience. You are like an unseen audience. Oh, I don't know what word you're saying. Audience. You know, like people watching something, an audience. Toaster strudel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where's my rat? I, that's, I'm sorry, I was looking for I was looking for them. These, these people uh, got uh, distracted me. What, you from Prior Lake or something? <laughs> well, we my, actually, we, we, we are, are from, from Prior, Prior Lake. Lake. Yes. Yeah, I've sort of figured the way you're dressed. It's beautiful country, beautiful country, like real pure. You know what you I'm know saying? You know, the lake isn't there anymore. It's That's why they call it Prior Lake, prior to what it is I now, which is a city. Yes, we, and we also that we hope the lake will return. So this is the <laughs> time prior to the lake being there again. Yes, it's You our can religion. stand there and tell me about your lake, or you can help Toaster Stew and I find our singing rat. I'm sorry, who are you, sir? And are you from Minnesota? <laughs> you both have unusual Minnesotan accents. We're from War Road. From where? War Road, Minnesota. War, War Road, Minnesota. War Road? Way up in the Iron Range. Oh, is nice. It? Yeah. It sounds even... like a Cormac McCarthy novel, War Road. <laughs> I'm very learned. Or or a George Miller movie. Or a George I'm, I'm into Miller pop culture. Movie. Toaster Strudel. Yeah. We gotta find that rat. I know. That rat. It, it, I mean, it, not only does it sing, but it also has keys to my car. Yeah. How are we gonna get back home if we don't find the rat? I don't know. Okay. We gotta get away from We gotta stop talking to these people. getting distracted. Okay. Okay. Apple course of an Addison. I hear him. There he goes. Let's follow him. Oh, there they go. I, what an alarming and interesting day we've already had at the fair. Do you feel any less intimidated or more so? Uh, I feel a little less intimidated. I think because those people are outsiders. They're not from Minnesota, so it emboldens me. Hey, why, why don't we follow them and see what's going on with them? Oh, this almost feels like we're doing something bad. Look, I like there, it. There they are over there. Let's creep up on them. Come here. Come here, little okay. rat. Don't, don't spook him. Okay. Don't freak him. Okay, come here, little rat. You're freaking me out. <laughs> I see you. No, we, 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 we don't, we're not going to do nothing. Toast your truth, I'm not going to do You that. want these keys, don't you? <laughs> Come on, rat. Mm. <laughs> don't you sing at me. Apple cars by no. night. It's like, quit dancing and get him. I'm sorry. It's so rhythmic. Well, it makes me glot, so glot, glot, glot. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Where'd he go? He disappeared again. Toaster Strudel. Yeah. Uh, I'm so upset right now. Listen, she's Danish. I just, uh, I want to taste something. Okay. I think maybe we're in the wrong game. We can't even hold on to our singing rat. Or our car. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's time to get out of this rat race. Literally. <laughs> what the heck? What are we even going to do if we're not in the singing rat business? How do you think they got into this business in the first place? I can't imagine. I, I mean, wonder I what imagine. happened. Hey. All my strudel money's died up. Or yeah. died up. I got fired today. Oh, that's no good. Yeah. What happened? I, I, I'm no good at selling cars. Yeah. Well, what are we gonna do now? Oh, look who it is. You two probably don't even fucking remember me. You pieces <laughs> of shit. No, I, you, I mean, you kind of look familiar. Let me stop you there. Fuck you. Whoa. 
Oh, okay. You want you want you want to step outside? Toast your shirt. I do want to step outside. Yeah, do you want? Yeah, I do. Here, okay. hold my singing rat. Okay. Well, thanks <laughs> for holding me. You're gorgeous. Look at you. I dare you to punch me in the fucking neck. Okay. Oh. oh! Toast your shirt. <laughs> wow, you guys did it. they doing now? I don't know. They're just sort of looking at each other like something meaningful. Hey, what are you guys talking oh, about? Oh, oh, Judith, oh, this is a rat. Oh, my God. Mm. Hey. Hi. Hi oh, there. Uh, this, this is my wife, Judith. My name is Coffee. Hello, Hello your highness. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> well, now, should we assume he's royalty? I don't know. He's so smart. Are you, uh, the, your majesty, if it please the court? <laughs> no, um, no, she was right. Judith, you are so learned. Oh. I am the king of the rats. Oh, can, King can, Rat! I have so many questions. Can, yes. Can all rats sing, or is it just you? All of us can. Every single. But most rat. of us decide not to. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Some of us are soul rats. I'm a soul rat. Oh, so uh, do rats sing in every genre? Every genre. Can I ask you something? And I mean this with all due respect. Judith, to please, your please, Are all... please. <laughs> Do you need me to ask a question in song, or is it okay? I if would I just love speak? that if you did. Most people don't <clears throat> even ask ask that question. Please ask in song. Okay, Mister Red, you aren't fit. <clears throat> Are all your questions sassy? Yes! Wow, asked and answered. Yes. M- Mr. Rat. Yes. Uh, may I ask you a question Shh, in song? No. Listen. Oh. <laughs> Listen. My owners are awful people. They, they seem awful. They spanked me while I was wet. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a wood stick. A wood what is, stick. Now, what is a wood Is that like a ruler or a... It's a... a basically a... Okay. Put the ladle down. Are you putting this middle stick down? Please, 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 please. I don't, I don't care how much, how much you sing at me. You, uh, you, know, you, you know you should sing, and you know you should take a bath. Wait, look, what? look over there. Ha, your keys. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, that's how you escape. Awful. Yes, I took their keys, and I escaped here to the state fair. Well... <laughs> But now here, it's a veritable smorgasbord, orchestra, orchestra. Yes, yeah, so so you've sung many times. Yeah. Can what now? What would be your ideal lifestyle if you're not interested in living with cheese Danish and toaster strudel anymore? Oh, Judith, what a question! I would love to be returned back to my royal status, into my rat kingdom, far, far away in Wisconsin. This reminds me of the movie Splash. Only instead of a beautiful mermaid, it's a singing rat. You like pop culture coffee? I do, Judith, and that was an A number one reference right on the money. Thank you. Your Majesty, may we... I don't want to ever hear your questions. Uh, Judith, (laughs) please. Honey, coffee, do you want to sing me a question and then I'll I'll ask him? quietly sing you a question. Hold on, could you just give us a minute, couples talk? I'll just do a Bob Fosse number here. Uh, Wonderful. Here we go. Your Majesty, King of the Rats, how do we restore you to greatness? We will take you in our car Five, six, seven, to eight. the place where you shall reign. Your Majesty, King. That's right, second verse. <laughs> We want to aid your kingdom. We will take you in our car and restore you to your rightful throne. Is that okay? Is the end of the No, question. I can I can pass that along. Uh, <clears throat> ah, yes, just in time. I just finished. Your Highness, <laughs> the king has been gone for ten months now. The kingdom. Is sad. We must elect a new leader, but not elect, since obviously we are a monarchy. We must appoint a new leader. (laughs) As the black judge here, (laughs) I agree. Well, you know, we're all rats, so we're all black. 
Yes, true. I'm not. I'm one of the science rats. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I suppose you've come here to give us your knowledge. <laughs> and give us your data. Here's what I found out. Anything colored red is pretty delicious. <laughs> so I highly recommend it, although some people overindulge and they're not doing so good. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I can recommend several shampoos. <laughs> um, <laughs> eyeliners. You smell like cigarettes. Have they been tr- tr- take, putting, making you smoke sm- cigarettes? Um, they haven't been making me, but I, <laughs> some of the rats next to me have been smoking. And I don't know, it just looked cool. <laughs> Listen, the last time you nim rats got out. If there was hey, a- I'll ask you <laughs> to make a clear separation between nim and rats so it doesn't sound like an insult. I, the last time you rats of Nim Thank you uh, Came in Is when the king was uh, allowed to disappear Very distracting I don't know I can't remember what happened Are you saying <laughs> you, it, I can't figure out if you're saying it's just a coincidence Or if you're blaming us I'm, I'm blaming you Because oh, that, right. that drunkard came in here and stole the king Which drunkard are you talking about. The one about. no one's... Oh, look who the fuck it is. I bet you don't remember which rat I am. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you don't remember that we met fucking 40 uh, rat days no, ago? No, no, no. I you don't. don't remember. Listen, okay, you know what? I uh, I have very valuable time here, okay? Oh, and I meet a oh, lot, oh, oh, oh. a lot of people. So I don't know who you are, okay? Hey, Let's- uh, your highness, is this uh, Nimrat giving you trouble? That's why you brought the uh, gym rats in to keep you safe. <laughs> if you need me to muscle up on this guy, I just recently recovered from that uh, thing I did when I was holding those lady weights. You and, think uh, you're feeling s- pretty good now. You so. think you're so cool because you can hold three pounds? Well, <laughs> fuck is you. Hey, you haven't seen me power walk, jerk. I have to say, for a rat to hold three pounds is pretty impressive. That's what I'm saying. It's like, just because he can do that, he thinks he's Has lucky. your back healed? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. I don't know why. I felt like I was being torn asunder. <laughs> Fellow scientists, um, we have a little bit of a problem. What's that? Um, it's, it's Terry. Uh, he has... We know he has an alcohol problem, obviously. He's constantly trying to pick fights with us and tell us we don't remember his name. Um, but he is also now getting his rat drunk and letting mm. that rat hang out with the other rats. So. Well, he's been, at least been recording his findings in a binder of some kind, because if so, that sounds more like an experiment than a... Yeah, is there a binder around? You guys, come on. The man is drunk. Uh, you can't... Uh, the last time, you two were having an affair, and you <laughs> used a binder, and all of a sudden uh, it was okay. We had very been significant findings. There had been very few sexual advances... It's made in binderism. And now people know what it's like when you have sex outside of your own marriage. That's right. Which they wouldn't have known otherwise. You're welcome. We wrote it down. Thank you for being brave. Hmm. Anyway, we need to deal with Terry. Well, should we have an intervention? Yeah, I I mean, I think so. All right, let's let's try having an intervention with Terry. (laughs) Terry. What the fuck? Thanks for remembering me. Yeah, we always remember you, Terry. Terry, you've been getting drunk. What? Yeah. Who said that? Terry, I would, I would go as far as to say, I think you, and I can't prove this, and I'm a scientist, so I can't say it for sure, you might be drunk right now. Are you fucking kidding me? Well. What, are you got anything to say, you piece of shit? <laughs> you guys can't just have ice water. You have to order something. Fuck you. I'm taking this up to, to the black judge. Your Honor, do I seem fucking drunk Don't to bother you? this person, sir. He's trying to Come eat on. his pie. He's, he's trying to eat his pie. He's I, clearly I, a I was, judge. I was just eating here. He's uh, clearly a judge. I, Your Honor. I'm so sorry. Yeah, what, what's going on? These assholes that I work with, they think I'm drunk. Which I am not, obviously. Okay. Why so, you chose to have an intervention in a Bennigan's is beyond me. I, uh, I mean, was, is this the birthday Thing I don't uh, think so. My, I'm here for happy. my birthday. Is this, oh. is this the song? Is it your birthday? Happy, yeah. happy birthday. Happy birthday to don't you. Don't sing that. It's very expensive. Uh, it's you not anymore. No, Public it's, domain. It's happy birthday to nice. you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> happy birthday. 
day, black judge at Ben Higgins. I'm Come on, guys, a, bring it up. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you oh. and many more. You. That's it, Terry. What? You're fired. What the fuck? Leave the lab and take your drunk rat with you. I hope this has no repercussions on the rat kingdom. And, Your Honor, I just want to say you look too young to be a judge. <laughs> Judith Coffee. Oh, look at you. Judith, it's me. look who it is. It's me, hey. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton. <laughs> oh, Governor Dayton. Welcome Jesus. to the fair. Hey. Oh, it's so good to see somebody from Briar Lake. Well, uh, did, now, did you, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I am a Democrat. Oh, we almost voted for you, but we oh, didn't. Yeah, well, sad to say. Well, Judy and I used I, to date. Anyway. What? <clears throat> um, I, I wouldn't say we dated more as that we just made pies for pie contests together, sure. which I can see you still And we entered them me, here but. at the fair. Hmm. And um, have you been to the All You Can Drink Milk booth or the haunted house? That's that the same our, every single year. That was our first stop. We got yeah. we got milk drunk and went into that haunted house. Yeah, it was very. Fun. Anything else interesting at the fair or seed art? Love seed art. Sure. Yes. We also saw a singing rat. That- what? Oh. <laughs> There's a rat at my fair. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, um, e, uh, I, we do uh, everything to get rid of vermin at this fair. Well, wait, why, why are we the ones that feel... <laughs> you, you're the one that should feel self-conscious about this. But that's why we broke up. He's very... Uh, he gets very indignant about I'm, things that he has no right to. Yeah, I'm you're, alarmed. You're blaming us for seeing a rat, yeah, but you're the one who has rats at your it's fair. It's called probably, the governorship. You probably brought that rat from Prior Lake. How dare you? You know, Jesse Ventura never would have said anything to us oh, like that. Never. <laughs> What a lovely house you have. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. so wonderful. Thank you. You know, ever since you started doing these door-to-door visits of every home in Minnesota, we were hoping we'd be picked one day. Oh. Yeah, I've been down to Minnetonka, Mankato. <laughs> I've been to Thief River Falls, International Falls, oh. Duluth. Step into a slim jam. Oh, hey, oh, juicy taste. You brought your lieutenant governor. <laughs> Macho Man Macho Randy Savage. Randy. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real help with diplomacy here in the Midwest. If I may say so, uh, Macho Man, you seem seem rather frail right now. Oh, well, I'm aging. You know what? You guys both look so hungry. I stopped making pies, of course, because it's an emotionally damaging experience now after my breakup and my happy marriage to coffee. But would you like some toaster strudel? We were just about to toast some in our toaster oven. I only eat Slim Jims. That might be your problem. What? Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Prince is here. <laughs> well, hello. Prince, what a pleasure to meet you. No, it's it's wonderful. Jesse. Uh, yes, he, your highness. You know, he, 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 he invited me to do this door-to-door uh, meet and greet with the Minnesotans. I've been, I've never been more aware of how many famous people came out of our home state. I know. I don't think I did come out of that state. I'm just connected via the World Wrestling Federation. Pardon me. Is there any room for another person in here? Yes, who are you? Yes. It's me, the host of Prairie Home Companion. <gasps> oh, Garrison Keeler. You s- beautiful words soothe me to sleep every time I listen to Dearly you. Dearly beloved, <laughs> Garrison Keeler. Thank, thank, thank you, Prince. Thank you for the intro, Prince. Now, what I'd like to do is just talk you all to sleep, and then <laughs> Prince, the governor, and I are going to root through your home and take whatever we deem valuable and leave the rest. So I want you to imagine a biscuit baking in the sun, just letting God's own sunbeam rays bake that biscuit. <laughs> okay. Cheese Danish, we have spent way too much time reminiscing about our past and other people's past and oranges. <laughs> we need to get that rat back. I love oranges. Oh, yeah, I love oranges, too. <laughs> oh, we're back in it. Shit. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Your Majesty, my wife has a question for you. <laughs> Your Majesty, King Rat, is it bad that I reveal that you're here? The governor hates vermin, and he also thinks you're quiet. <laughs> he thinks I'm quiet? Yes, I think you're quiet, well, Rat. <gasps> governor. Hello there, Governor. You're pretty loud for a quiet rat. I... This is true. I want you out of my fair right now. But People listen, are making sculptures out of butter. Listen, I have a great idea. I'd love to hear it. Have you ever had a ramen noodle that wasn't cooked? 
No, I cook my ramen noodles. You should try them without cooking them. They're crunchy. They're delicious. You put the flavoring on the head. Well, Governor, what do you think? How was it? We're opening a booth. Right here at the fair. Every single year, people are going to have crushed up ramen in a paper bag. Do, do you need someone to work that booth? Because we'd sure be honored to do it. We really would. We love the fair so much, we don't ever want to leave. Then consider it done. I'm writing it into law. Oh, and, and your majesty. Yes. My wife would like to ask you if, you, if you'd stay with us and, and be the- Shut up. I don't want to hear your questions. Yes, Judith. Your majesty the red. We think you're where? Look at them over there. Look at them. That's they all are right. Happily married. They're from a racist town. They are affluent, and they got their job selling crushed up ramen at a fair, and you and I didn't. We were too busy thinking about oranges. That's our rat. That's our rat. We stole that rat from that drunk guy. Pa- yeah. Pardon me. Pardon me. Citizen. Oh, hello. Hello, Garrison Keeler. Do you mind if I tell you a brief story because I like the looks of your watches and jewelry? <laughs> <laughs> and it all happened in a place called. The Minnesota State Fair. Colleen Smith, where can people find you online? What would you like to promote? It is July goddamn 18th. Um, I will probably be in Las Vegas doing Ooh. a puppet up at mm-hmm. the Venetian. Very exciting. Yeah, I, think, I think the show starts July 21st. Nice. And I think we're there for a while. Guys, take a break from the anxiety of blowing all your money on gambling <laughs> and go in and see Puppet Up. Uh, and then we'll still be doing No You Shut Up. That's right. Editor's note. The television program No You Shut Up has been canceled. And uh, then my Twitter is Colleen Smee. And I joined Instagram. That's right, you did. Paul's urging. So that one I'm Colleen Marie Smee because apparently there's already a Colleen Smee on Instagram. That's weird. I don't know. That's weird. It's very odd. Hmm. Um, and then I have a podcast called My First Time. That's right, you do. That I would love for you to listen to. It should be on iTunes by this point. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. There I we know. go. I hope so. Because it was it had not been on iTunes for a long time. So it's hard to find because yes. it's only on SoundCloud. Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. gonna get I'm gonna get on it. There we go. And then if you follow me on Twitter, I'll t- remind you constantly. There you go. And do follow Colleen on Twitter. She is a delight. Yeah. Mark McConville. Yes. Same things. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mark McConville. Mm-hmm. Um right now go to CISO. No. <laughs> And you can see the Pistol Shrimps basketball documentary. That's right. Yeah, yeah that'll yep. be, you'll be able to see that now. That comes out June 16th, but now you'll, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Yeah. If uh, listeners of our show will no doubt recall that uh, Amanda Lund and Maria Blasucci, two of our friends from this program, are members of the Pistol Shrimps basketball team here at the Women's Recreational League in Los Angeles. And Mark and our friend Matt Gorley uh, started doing uh, play-by-play of the games on Tuesday nights, Pistol Crystal Shrimps Radio is the podcast. That's right. And check out this uh, movie that was produced by Morgan Spurlock. That's correct. Um, and it's all about that's the team. So cool. uh, that's fantastic. I cannot wait to see that movie. It's going to be fun. I can't see yet, but by the time of this release, I will have seen already. Very good. <laughs> Mark, I'm looking over here now. Little Janet Varney. What do you want to tell oh. people about? <laughs> I paralyzed you with fear. Uh, 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 they can see you at Outside Lands. That's right. Doing, I think, a live Spontaneous Nation. Live Spontaneous Nation, Outside Lands Festival, yeah. August 7th yes. in San Francisco, California. Yes. Improvisers include Little Janet Varney. Me, right? Me, 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 me. Yeah. I can't remember if you ever agreed oh, to it or not. Sure. You did? Okay. Oh, God. yeah. God. Oh, sorry if I let that even be <laughs> potentially not answered. It may be me. I think you and I have trouble communicating because you and I always have a too bunch many of things going <laughs> too many on. things going on. And yeah. so the email just piles up. It, pretty but you're much better every at it than email I am. with each other could start with, did I respond to this? Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're much better at it than I am, to be fair. Well, thank you. Uh, and where I can people I like find you? More. you? <laughs> where, oh. uh, people can find me on Twitter at Janet Barney. They can find me on um, Your Instagram mouth is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> at the JV. <laughs> club and I don't know when it airs but I'm going to be on the show on IFC called Stand Against Evil which was created by Dana Gould that's right we're going to be shooting it in the summer in Atlanta hot Atlanta so if you see me about to pass out and you live in Atlanta and you want to come splash water in my face <laughs> please do now this is a post-apocalyptic show no, it's just a it's devil just a, show. Yeah, it's just a it's sort of a not a zombie uh, show. No, ghouls and, and well, Goblins. there might be some zombies, 
Witch, all manner witches of, and monsters. All and, manner of supernatural yeah, yeah, things. Yes. yes. And John C. McGinley is this retired sheriff who uh, enlists the help of the new sheriff in town. I finally get to say I'm the new sheriff in town. <laughs> finally. And other people will say she's the sheriff. That's right. <laughs> Oh, you, I'm going to back off everything I just said. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that should be fun, battling uh, crazy, creepy things. Fantastic. And Dana Gould, of course, is hilarious, so this will be a lot of fun. Excited. Um, and, of course, the JV Club podcast. Yes, and we'll be in the middle of Boys of Summer by that time. Fantastic. Who can say what gents will have joined us? We'll find the fuck out. I've never looked more threateningly at the two men that I <laughs> have not had on the podcast yet. Evan Go to EvanSchletter.com. Follow Evan Schletter on Twitter and Instagram. Go to Evan Schletter's website. Check out his work that is not Spontaneous Nation. Check out his own stuff because Evan Schletter is only the best. As for me, you know where to find me on the various social things. If you don't, it's very easy to figure out. Um, no, you shut up. Thursdays at 10 on Fusion uh, with Colleen Smith and many other of our friends from Spontaneous Nation uh, as the voices of hilarious puppets. Editor's note. The television program, No, You Shut Up, has been canceled. Um, and we do Spontaneous Nation Live the first Saturday of every month, August. Our show in August will have um, Desmond Borges from uh, You're the Worst, um, along with uh, Dana Dute, Tim Baltz, and Tawny Newsom from Bajillion Dollar Properties. That will be a fantastic show. Tickets are on sale, paulftompkins.com slash live. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the show. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti. Thanks again to Books for sponsoring today's episode. Just send flowers from thebooks.com. Books flowers are grown at eco-friendly farms on the side of a volcano. Blooms are larger, colors more vibrant. Books prices start at just 40 bucks. No upcharges, no extra fees. Even delivery is absolutely free when you register with the Books. Save 20% at books.com with promo code PFT. That's B-O-U-Q-S dot com, promo code PFT. Hello, hello. This is Nagin Farsad, the host of Fake the Nation, where we talk about politics, we talk about news, and we have a laugh. We were laughing. Every week, a cast of my funniest, smartest, and most politically astute friends, people like John Fugelsang, Liz Winstead, Dean Obidala, and others, tackle all the major issues like climate change. America leads the world in people who think climate change is fake but pro wrestling is real. <laughs> Guns! I started calling the NRA the AK-47%. <laughs> <laughs> Filibuster? I don't even know her! Okay, that's not a major issue, but it's a really great pun. Guys, there's gonna be insightful commentary, but also maybe some real great poop jokes. Thank the nation! <laughs> This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 